What's up, you guys? Hope you're having an awesome day. I'm your host, Eamon Hassan, and today we have with us. What's up, guys? My name is Jared Bronstein. I mean, you guys already know who I am. I've been in tons of videos with yeah, this yeah, chick, yeah. so. If you haven't already, check out Top 10 Central, you guys. We are on it. If you're feeling down and need a laugh, click to the left. Click to the left right over here, guys, and check out the Top 10 Funniest Russian Dating Site Profile Pictures. I promise you guys will enjoy it. Give us a like just for Jared getting that title. It's a long one. Yeah. And when you check out the channel, well, you'll get this joke, but make sure you smash the like button. <laughs> Anyway, you guys, let's just get into it. These are the top 10 scary Ouija boards that destroyed lives, part three. Jared was also in part one, lest we forget. Starting us off at number 10, Reddit user Ted Corp and his story, not a clock in the room. This one is short and sweet and absolutely terrifying. Personally, I don't believe in ghosts or spirits much, and it seems that was the case with Ted over here. One night, Ted, his girlfriend, and her friend were all hanging out and decided to pull out a Ouija board. They were just messing around and asking questions, not thinking much of it, until they felt they had an encounter with something. Deciding to test their theory, they asked what time it was. It's important to mention, there wasn't a clock, TV, VCR, watch, nothing in the room to tell time. Upon the spirit answering, or Ted thinking his girlfriend was messing around, Ted went to another room and realized the answer was completely accurate. So safe to say Ted is now a believer of ghosts and will never be the same man again. Coming in at number 9 is Pam's mother. So this girl called Pam grew up in a quite a religious household and honestly her life was pretty stable for the most part until her mom started using a Ouija board. Pam came home after a few weeks of being away to find her mother a completely changed woman. From a pleasant, soft-spoken person, she became scary. Her mum started consulting her Ouija board before making any decision and would take it with her everywhere she went. One night, Pam was trying to fall asleep, but she had a sinking feeling that she was being watched, and she wasn't wrong. Her mum was in the corner of her room, and when Pam started complaining about her fear, she said she hoped God was watching over her. Her mum then laughed and said something was definitely protecting her, but it wasn't God. Later the same night, Pam heard what sounded like a party going on downstairs. At 3 a.m., she walked downstairs to see the planchette on the board moving by itself and her mother sitting behind it with multiple voices coming out of her. They were male, female, demonic, you name it, they were coming out of her. After she went to bed, Pam found the board and burnt it, which did nothing to stop her mum, who then went out and just bought another one. After her mum died, the board disappeared from the house, but Pam believes she's still being haunted by whatever her mum summoned. Now at 8, a story by anonymous person titled, If You Play With Fire. This one is short and sweet as well, yet absolutely terrifying and for the sake of context we'll name her Jessica. 10 out of 10, a life is ruined here. So our friend Jessica here played with a Ouija board, not thinking much of it, getting dark and scary replies from names she didn't know. One claimed to be Jessica's uncle but she didn't think much of it. Jessica would play with the homemade Ouija board quite regularly and a few weeks later things got weird. Out one night at a club, Jessica claims she ran into an old friend she hadn't seen in two years and he told her he's got something weird to tell her. I quote, I went to see a reader. She told me that she had a message for a friend of mine, a woman. She said your name. She told me to tell you to stop playing with the Ouija board because you are going to get burnt. Does that make sense to you? End quote. Following the incident, Jessica claims to have never touched a board again and is permanently scarred. Filling out another seven slot is Cindy. Now, Cindy was a 13 year old girl, the middle child of six kids from a very devout Christian family that lived in northern Maine. While she was in the eighth grade, one of her friends let her borrow her Ouija board that weekend, and so that night, Cindy and her sister started asking it questions. Knowing their parents would think it was sacrilegious, they did it at night in secret with nothing but a candle on. After they were done, there was something about the board Cindy couldn't stop thinking about. She started becoming obsessed and making a list of questions she wanted to ask the spirit. Now there was an hour after school every day where Cindy was the only one home, so every day she started using the Ouija board. The planchette spelled out hi and that its name was Jake, which was freaky as hell considering she had a friend called Jake who had died in a car crash when they were in fourth grade. She then asked if it was really him, to which the board spelled out yes. The two continued talking for the next few days, but the conversation conversation started getting darker and angrier and Cindy realized she maybe wasn't talking to Jake after all. Two weeks later, the entity finally told her it was a demon that if she told anyone, it would kill her. That night, the family found Cindy in the corner of her room crying and she was later admitted to a mental facility to recover from the emotional damage she incurred. And at the number 6 spot, a story from Reddit user Link and the TARDIS. So Link's cousin started a fire in their grandmother's basement. Not sure if it was accidental or the kid is an arsonist, but either way, that's irrelevant. All of their games, including a Ouija board were kept under a sofa which was in the basement. The fire managed to burn everything to a crisp. All that was left of the basement were ashes and the Ouija board. That's right, the couch and all the other games burnt to the ground. 
ground, but the Ouija board and the box itself weren't singed. I don't know how you explain this, but it's quite certain that board is the work of the devil and needs to be taken back down to hell where it came from. Coming in at number 5 is March Madness. So back in March of 1920, a small town in Southern California was rife with hysteria after police arrested 7 people who had stripped nude and started acting mad after playing with a Ouija board. Over the next few days, more and more people started falling victim to this Ouija board induced insanity. One police officer even went nude and started running around a local bank while screaming hysterically and mind you, he had had no contact with the board. A 15 year old girl involved in the nudity and hysteria explained she was acting the way she was because after playing with the board, she could now communicate so effectively with spirits, she didn't even need a board. She could just see them everywhere she went. Now at 4, a story from Reddit user MillieBob35. Millie explains how they are from Edinburgh, which is famous for having an underground city. Decided to be adventurous, Millie and her friend decided to spend the night and were drawn to the Ouija board, one of the activities available. I guess this underground city is almost an amusement of sorts. Regardless, for about 30 minutes, the board was informing them of who haunted the location. Eventually, Millie asked if she could leave, to which the board said yes. 10 minutes later, when Millie's friend asked if she could leave, the board said no. The movements on the board got faster and more erratic, and even the room's temperature dropped. It took a handful of people in the room alongside Millie and her friend to start crying for this thing to let everyone go. Following the incident, Millie won't go near another board and I really don't blame her. Filling at number 3 slot is Tom. Years ago there was a group of 3 middle school boys, Tom, Josh and Chris. Tom used to always punch and bully Josh to the point he'd get bruised and also call him names and although Chris didn't like it, he just stayed silent so he wouldn't be hit as well. One summer the boys found a Ouija board in the trash and took it to Tom's house. Tom's mum had passed away years prior and his dad was never home since he was always working. Either way, the three had their hands on the planchette and after 20 minutes of literally nothing happening, they were about to give up. But then the planchette abruptly spelled out get away. Tom was like get away, I live here. And the planchette spelled out now. Chris was like where should we even go and the entity spelled out it hurts. Tom then asked one of them to ask a question only they would know the answer to so Josh immediately asked who keeps hitting him. The planchette spelled ask Tom and then spelled out dad. Chris was like I think this question is for Tom and so the board spelled out dad again and again. Tom then runs to the other room and starts crying and it was only then did Tom admit that his dad physically and verbally abused him on the daily and somehow the Ouija board knew that. When they asked who the entity was, it spelled out mom. Now at number 2, Ouija Prediction. When Inez was 12 years old, she and her friend Becky decided it was Ouija time in her house located in Cambridge, Minnesota. Middle of the day, the girls were using the Ouija board Inez got for Christmas and they asked what Inez was in her past life. The board answered, spelling out Rebecca Lynn Peltzer Miller was there. Inez had no idea who this was so she didn't think much of it and asked the board if she'll meet anyone from her past life here. The board answered yes and then upon the girls asking who, the board spelt out Vincent Daniel Douglas. Fast forward 2 years, Inez has yet to meet someone with this name. She joins a production of the musical Annie and the lead opposite her was named Danny Douglas. Inez claims although the two had never met before, she felt as if she had known him her entire life. Upon remembering her Ouija board encounter, Inez asked if Danny Douglas was his real name, to which she replied that his first name was Vincent and the name was a family name that was passed down through generations. Talk about life changing. And finally, at number one is Jen. So this was shared by Reddit user So Wake Up, and she said when she was a kid, her and her other friends played with a Ouija board in their friend's attic. There was a boy that lived down the street from them that had sort of disappeared, and the user wanted to know what had happened to him. So when they asked the board who they were speaking to, it spelled out Jeremy, which was the boy's name. It then went on to spell out some nonsense before spelling out the name Jennifer, and that freaked out the user and her friend since they both had the same name, which was Jennifer. But the board spelled out the user's first and last name, meaning it was her. The girls all took a step back from the board and then it started spinning in circles before spelling out you are dead. Which I mean, doesn't really leave much to the imagination does it? You are dead, pretty self explanatory. Then the board flew off the table, hit the door so hard that it actually full on broke. That night when Jennifer went to sleep, she didn't wake up after that for three days. Her parents fully thought she was comatose or dead, but thankfully she did wake up and whatever hold Jeremy had on her was gone and thankfully she's still alive. And that is it for today's video guys. What do you think Jared? Would you ever try a Ouija board? I haven't yet and I, I no. They just scare me. The idea of like <laughs> opening a portal for ghosts and stuff. I, it's, it's but a, you just have to close it and it'll be fine. No, it's gonna be a no for me dog. That's gonna be a no. That's a hard no for me as well. Well anyway guys, hope you enjoyed. Make sure to check out Top 10 Central you guys. Yeah, there's some familiar hosts that you guys will definitely enjoy watching. Click right over here and check it out. And let us know in the comments down below that you guys came from this video. As always, I'm your host Ivan Hassan. Occasionally I'm your host Jared Bronstein. And we'll see you next. Time. Let's get it! What's up, motherfuckers? It's your boy! I see. <laughs> no, let's just do that again. <laughs>
with this chick. They I was gonna say, like, did I not talk like chick? I was gonna say girl. I just decided to go with chick instead. I don't it's know. Fine, it's fine. I haven't seen the word chick in so long. Like, why is it coming out now? I don't know. Great. Take it away, big boy. <laughs> All right, starting us off at number ten. We got big man over here. <laughs> So this girl called Pam grew up in a quite f f calm down. Okay. Oh, got it. A small town in Southern Cal. I need to sneeze really bad right now. Alright, put that smile back on and act happy. 